Hi everyone, I'm T of Front End Fanatic and thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you how to install and set up Visual Studio Code. I thought this would be a good idea for those of you who are not really familiar with web development and would like to know where to begin. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as you can see, I'm already on the page where um, you download the Visual Studio code. If you guys are not familiar with how to land on this page, basically, I will leave the link in the description box below so that you can just click it and it'll take you there. OK, and I'm on a Windows at the moment, so I'm going to download it for Windows. However, if you're on a different operating system, you would just click this arrow here. OK, and download for whichever system you're on. Today I'm on my Windows machine, so I'm going to select this option here, okay, and I'm going to start downloading that. And as you can see in this left hand corner here, it has the file that's downloading, and I've been redirected to a page which gives you sort of an introduction to Visual Studio Code and how to use it. It also gives you a sort of panel to show you the top extensions for Visual Studio Code. I have a few suggestions for you guys to add to your extensions in Visual Studio Code. It will just make your life easier as a developer and help you to just sort of get your work out a lot quicker. OK, so now, as you can see, the file has downloaded and I'm now going to go on and install. So just go through all the usual. OK, be sure to read the terms and conditions, accept the agreement and click next. Make sure it's in the right directory. Next, next, and I want to create a desktop icon. It's completely optional. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just find it easy to have it on my desktop just to access it. It's one of the, the main programs I use. So I'm just going to click that and then click next. Okay, and just allow that to install. It shouldn't take long. And it's all done. So it's given me the option if I want to launch it, and I sure do. So I'm going to click finish, and it should just open up just like that, really. And it should look a little something like this once you have opened it. As you can see here, it's got a recent tab for me. Despite the fact that I just reinstalled it, it's got this um, tab here. What's good about this is that if you ever have any issues with your operating system and you might need to sort of, you know, uninstall the program, when you do reinstall it, all of your presets will still be there. So all of your files that you recently opened within VS Code will be there. And also all of your extensions that you previously used will be there, which makes it so much easier because then you don't have to spend time, you know, trying to reorganize everything. And it's just very time consuming. So that's a really good feature of VS Code. And I think what I'm going to do is just open this folder here so that we can use it as a demo. OK, just to see how some of our extensions work. So I click that. So now I'm going to go to the extensions. The extension is this sort of puzzle looking thingy here, OK, in the left hand panel. You click on that. And what should happen is you get a whole list of recommendations, um, popular extensions, etc. So the first one I'm going to go for is Prettier, OK, and Prettier is basically like a formatting extension for when things get a bit messy. If I just click that, you get a bit of documentation that basically gives you an outline and explains to you how to sort of go about using it, etc. OK, and I would say pretty is good because if you are like me and you spend a lot of time copying and pasting certain sections of your document, it does get a bit messy after a while and the format just starts to look really, really awful. So what you do is you click install. It doesn't take two seconds, really. There you go. It's installed. OK. And now I'm going to go back to my HTML document, right, because I actually want to try it out and see how it works. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I will create a div. And then I'm going to create a P tag, but I'm going to indent it so that it just looks terrible. It will never be this bad, but, you know, I'm just giving you an example. And then I'm going to add another one somewhere. Let's see, where should I go? Maybe over here. Right, and now I'm going to control S to save. But as you can see, it doesn't look great, does it, really? Let's even indent this just so that you can see. It doesn't look great. It's all over the place. If anybody wants to edit my code, they'd be completely confused. And so what you do to just get that back 
in line and for it to look uniform and readable you highlight the section and you right click on your mouse and format document with and I'm going to pick prettier and watch what happens to that section that I've highlighted and there you have it just like that the second extension that I will recommend for you guys is IntelliSense for CSS so let's put that in right there it is okay we're going to click on that once again you're going to see the documentation I would actually give you a demo but it's sort of self-explanatory it basically works in a sort of predictive way we will predict what you're typing and then it will give you a list of um, different predictions to pick from and what I found about this is that it actually makes your time trying to put together your projects really easy because it just cuts down time you don't have to spend too much time retyping things out over and over again because it gets very tedious especially in things like CSS when you have to keep sort of targeting certain classes and you're constantly writing them out it can get really annoying so this is something that I recommend so I'm going to install that once again remember you in, you click the install button there I'm just going to install quick and easy it's installed now and the third one that I'm going to just suggest for you is live server okay and I'm gonna click on that for the documentation what it does is it allows you to see your project in real time so every time you hit control save if you open a live server page within your browser you will see your project in live view okay I will hope I explain that properly so I'm going to install that Okay, that's installed. And now I'm going to go back to my index.html file up here, right? And as you can see, we've still got this little demo here. So we're going to use that, right? Go back to my documents, that's up here. And like I said, in order for it to work, you have to either command save or control save your work before you actually see the changes. So control save like that. And now I'm going to right click on um, the section where my document is right click and I'm going to say open with live server right and there it is guys there you have it okay so that's all I have for you today guys I hope that was informative and I hope that you are now on your way to setting up your workstation and becoming a great web developer don't forget to like comment share subscribe all of that good stuff and I'll be back with more tutorials like this bye